With no sure number one receiver on the current Arizona State Sun Devils roster, can Brian Thompson possibly step up and be that guy this year? I'm going to talk about my stat projections for him in 2022 on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. Our Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen every day. Remember, we're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, if you would like to check us out in a visual platform. But wherever you do get those podcasts, make sure that you hit like and subscribe and turn on those notifications so that you get an update whenever we drop a new episode of the podcast. Let's go ahead and hop into today's conversation. As we continue our series on predicting stats for the, <clears throat> excuse me, Arizona State Sun Devil players heading into the 2022 season, we've done our quarterback, we've done uh, our two number one running backs. Uh, yesterday we did Cam Johnson. Today we're going to hop over to Brian Thompson, one of the other main receivers on the Sun Devils roster, and my overall predictions for him. So, quick little overview. Uh, Brian Thompson was anything but productive last year, only hauling in 13 passes for a flat 130 yards, zero touchdowns, and eight games played. This is not indicative of the player that Brian Thompson is, in my opinion. <clears throat> During his time with Utah, so this is his first year with Arizona State last year, he had spent his previous four seasons with the Utes. He was averaging 22.9 yards of reception on 33 catches. So not a ton of volume, but he also was never really featured that much. And part of it was he didn't get on the field a ton, only appearing in 18 games in four years. But when he did have the ball in his hands, he was making the play. In, in the year that he was featured the most, 2019, Hauled in 18 passes for 461 yards and three touchdowns. I think this is a guy who can stretch the field. I think he's a guy who can just make, make a play happen when you need it. And that's something that Arizona State has always really, really valued in their passing game. You look at Brandon Ayuk and Frank Darby in recent years who have taken the tops off of defenses and made, made opposing teams pay for it when they don't respect it. That is something that the Sun Devils definitely covet in their wide receiving core. And I think that Brian Thompson could be that guy. I think it's going to be him or it's going to be Andre Johnson. But looking at Thompson, this is a guy who has proven production. And I find it hard to believe that he is a flat 10 yards of catch guy. I think that he should definitely be able to rebound this year and put in a much better performance. So, just like yesterday, first segment, we're going to go through the receiving yards. Second segment, we'll do receptions and touchdowns. And then the final segment, we're just going to do a brief little overview of everything that I predicted. Looking at the yardage, now, I don't I don't see a scenario where he is your leading wide receiver this year. I don't see a scenario where he's a 1,000-yard receiver just because I don't know if the volume is going to be there. Now, similar to Cameron Johnson yesterday when we were talking about him, sure, the volume could be there because it, it, it's got to go somewhere, right? There's there, your top four receivers from a year ago, uh, Ricky Pearsall, Rashad White, LB Bunkley, Shelton, and Curtis Hodges are all gone, as is uh, Johnny Wilson, who had 12 catches of his own last year. So there is a lot of, there, there's a lot of vacancies, targets, and receptions to be had here. And Brian Thompson could be the biggest beneficiary of that because he is returning. He does have that edge over Cam Johnson because he he's been in in Tempe for a year. He knows the program a little bit, right? So he might have a step ahead there, which could lead him to being the number one receiver. And it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world. I personally am saying it's probably Cam Johnson, but I absolutely am not going to be ruling out Brian Thompson. I think that Brian Thompson is a very talented receiver. And I would like to see him get more of a fair opportunity this year. And with that being said, 
I think a best case scenario for him, and I think this would be a really, really good season, is 700 yards here. Considering your leading receiver a year ago, Ricky Pierce all had 580 yards. And you have a new quarterback now. 700 yards would be a massive season for Brian Thompson. And the reason why I'm I'm willing to go that high is because of the deep playability. I think that Thompson is going to be one of the go-to guys over the top and stretch defenses and keep secondaries honest, especially when you have a mobile quarterback like Emory Jones running amok or stepping into the pocket. But just the threat of knowing that he can break the pocket, if Brian Thompson can find a way to be one of those receivers who can break off of his route and just find a way to get open, I think that this would be huge for his production. It'd be huge for Arizona State, obviously. But that's one of the reasons why I'm willing to go as high as I am here on Brian Thompson, is I think that he could truly end up being a big-time playmaker for the Sun Devils this year if he's able to create those opportunities for himself. It, they, If he's not getting on the field, there's, there's definitely something wrong. It either is he's unbelievably underachieving, or he's just banged up, but he should be on the field for quite a bit of time this year. It was kind of hard last year being a transfer coming off of a COVID year as well with Ricky Pearsall, LV Bunkley Shelton ahead of you. Uh, a lot of people, including myself, were very high on Andre Johnson last year coming into 2021. So there, there's at least an understanding for why Thompson wasn't able to get on the field and flash as much as the next guys ahead of him did. But this year, there there truly isn't very many excuses that he can make for himself. So I'm believing 700 yards is, is an absolute best case scenario. But on the flip side, I'm saying 200 yards is, you know, the lowest he could put up. I think this could once again be an underachieving season for Brian Thompson if he's not able to get on the field and capitalize on the plethora of opportunities that he's going to have this year. So if he can't find a way to seize these opportunities and truly, truly become a good complimentary receiver to a Cam Johnson or even the number one receiver in a best case scenario, it'd be very disappointing. But overall, I think my prediction here is going to be about 500 yards. Again, Ricky Pierce all finished first last year with 580 yards. I'm saying that Cam Johnson's our leading receiver at 600. You're looking at our receivers from last year. Uh, Ricky Pierce, all, again, 580 receiving yards was the leader. I'm saying that Cam Johnson's our number one, and he's going to be 600 yards. Number two receiver was LB Bunkley Shelton sitting at 418. I think that Thompson should be able to get right around that ballpark. I am going on the higher side, though, and I'm saying 500 receiving yards. Overall, the biggest thing here is Thompson needs to find a way to truly separate himself, not just from the com the competition that's uh, that that he's going to be playing against, but also against secondaries. When he's able to break away from coverage and show off that big playability, I think that there's there's the sky the sky could be the limit here. I again I severely doubt he is a ten yards of reception guy because he was not that at Utah. I'm not saying he's going to continue to be a 22.9 yards per reception guy, but I don't see any reason he can't be in that 15 yards or more range. I think he's definitely capable of that kind of big play. And that's going to be my final prediction on the yards here is 500. I think it's just, it's going to be more indicative of the passing offense. Like I had mentioned a lot yesterday with Cam Johnson. I don't know if you're going to be a very pass heavy team either way. I believe in Brian Thompson to have a rebound year and and just be able to have that big splash play that really gets the offense going in energized. Let's go ahead and hop into our first break. Now, when we return, we're going to go ahead and continue our conversation about Brian Thompson's stats going into 2022. This is the Locked on Sun Levels podcast. And this episode of Locked on Sun Levels is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now nearly impossible for your local chain auto parts store to store all of the parts that you need for your vehicle. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions while the person behind the counter 
orders parts on their computer and choosing the only brand that their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years with prices reliably low for every customer. They have everything you need from brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. You'll explore their easy-to-use website today to find a solution to all your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Type Locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts your cart will ever need at rockauto.com. Again, thank you guys so much for making the Locked On Sentinels your first listen every day. Remember, we are free and available on all platforms. Let's go ahead, hop back into our conversation here about Brian Thompson and my predictions for stats. We're going to go ahead and take a look at receptions now. I think in an absolute best case scenario, and, and this is like a, a huge, huge best case scenario is like 50. And the reason why I'm willing to go that high is because the window is not closed on him being the number one receiver. Again, I'm super high on Cam Johnson, but Cam Johnson is far from a lock to be the number one receiver. In fact, Brian Thompson should have an inside track to be the number one, considering he is the most veteran guy returning to the team with the most experience I think that could definitely play into a massive advantage for him this year. And I'm hoping that that's exactly what it ends up being. I think that in, in a scenario where he ends up being your number one receiver, he could prove to be like a go-to guy in the offense. I think he could be capable of that. Now, obviously he doesn't, he doesn't have a track record of being that guy with his career high in catches being just 18 back in the 29th season, 2019 season for Utah. But that was also that was also a year where they just truly were not much of a passing team in general. Uh, Tyler Huntley was the quarterback back then, and he only tossed the ball 301 times. Meanwhile, they had just ton, tons and tons and tons of rushing carries, uh, mainly Zach Moss being the guy back then. But overall, I think that the, the volume might be there for him just because there's not really a guy with Arizona State right now, which is why I'm going to go 50. But just like I'm saying, there, there was a very low point on the receiving yards. There's also a very low point on the receptions. I'm going 20 here. I don't see, I don't see how he finishes less than that. He had 13 last year, despite really not being featured in the offense whatsoever. I feel like he's got to have at least 20. If he doesn't have 20, then goodness gracious, that is that is just a nightmare scenario for the Sun Devils. But I don't see any less than 20. 50 is just an absolutely insane season for him. My final prediction, though, I'm going to go 35. I feel pretty good about that. Again, if I'm, if I'm referring to what we had last year with our guys, LB Bunkley Shelton had 33 receptions as the number two receiver in the offense. I think that I think that Brian Thompson can be in that ballpark. I like him to definitely get himself incorporated more. I don't know if they want to use him the way I'm saying to use him as kind of like a deep threat guy, but I do think that the Sun Devils are going to find a way to get the ball in Brian Thompson's hands and let him create. I think that Thompson could definitely prove to be that guy if he's able to get those opportunities. As far as touchdowns go, I'm not overly high on his touchdown numbers. I think in an absolute best case scenario, this is probably like a five to six touchdown guy. I'm going six here. I thought about seven, but seven feels very, very rich. So I'm going six in a best case scenario. He, he has four career touchdowns and three of them came in 2019. This is not a, this is not a double digit touchdown guy. This isn't Nikhil Harry. This isn't Jalen Strong. I, I think if he were able to get five or more touchdowns, that would be totally tremendous. But just like Cam Johnson, I am going to go benefit of the doubt here with Brian Thompson, just like I did Cam, or uh, Brian Thompson, just like I did Cam Johnson. I don't know that the Sun Devils are going to be throwing a lot this year. And I don't know if the, if the passing touchdowns are going to be there. I said that, Emory Jones is going to throw 17 touchdown passes. 
And I feel like that's a very fair number. And considering what he's throwing to, that also seems fair. If these guys hit their potential, I believe I said Cam Johnson could be like a seven to eight touchdown guy. I don't have that in front of me. But I did I did finalize a five touchdown season for Cam Johnson. I think that Brian Thompson has never been a touchdown guy, but maybe he's able to turn some big plays into big touchdowns. So six would be a best case scenario. I feel like one to two is a worst case scenario. I'll say two to be generous. I mean, he is coming off the season where he did have zero touchdowns and three of his five seasons, he didn't have a touchdown. So I'm, I don't know. I don't I don't like pinning seasons where he didn't have a lot of touches and saying that he can't score. His first two years at Utah, he only played five games and six catches, didn't catch a touchdown. In the other two seasons where he actually got some volume, he was able to score. But last year, he didn't get in the end zone for the Sun Devils. I don't want to sit here and pigeonhole him as a guy who just doesn't get in the end zone. But until he shows me otherwise, that's kind of the way I had to value him. Prediction, I'm going three. I think that that's, that's fair, that's reasonable, that's within his range. Three is his career high. He's potentially the number one receiver, definitely the number two. I 100% think he's no worse than the number two receiver. As much as I would love to see Andre Johnson take a step forward, I just don't see it happening. Sorry, but you know, prove me wrong. I want to see it. I'm not here doubting you and saying that you're incapable of being a good receiver, but until I see it happen, Andre, I feel like you're probably the number three receiver, but focusing on Brian Thompson, he's never been a big touchdown guy. I'm not expecting him to be a big touchdown guy, but I do think that he can definitely make a step forward this year. We're going to go ahead and hop into our final break. Now, when we return, we're going to do an overall view of the stats I predicted him and my final thoughts before we conclude this episode. This is the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. BetOnline.net is still your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And betonline.net remains the number one spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, news, and more this season. Betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. And don't forget, guys, to get all your Pac-12 news on the Locked On Pac-12 podcast with host Spencer McLaughlin, plus local experts on on the Locked On network. We'll take you across the Pac-12 in 30 minutes. Make sure that Locked On Pac-12 is your second listen of the day. Final thoughts here on Brian Thompson. So the overall stats I'm saying here, 35 catches, 500 yards, three touchdowns, For what it's worth, that would end up being 14.3 yards per reception, which is still low for what he what he did during his time at Utah. But like I said, I'm not I'm not expecting this guy to go back to being a 22.9 yards per reception guy, especially in an offense that is probably not going to be predicated on passing the football. However, I do think there's going to be deep shots. Arizona State has very much valued the deep ball. Not 10 to 20 times a game, not even five times a game, but like one, two, maybe three deep shots a game. Arizona State loves doing that just to test the secondary when they suck them in. And I think Thompson could be that go-to guy, which could give him a really nice boost in his in his uh, yards per reception numbers. I like him. I, I want to see him get those opportunities. It feels like there's no situation where he doesn't get those opportunities this year. I find it very difficult to believe that there's not, there's not any kind of scenario 
where Thompson is, again, a 13-catch guy. Short of him getting injured or just flat out being really, really bad, this is a guy who's going to have plenty of opportunity. He's going to be on the field a lot. He's going to get the targets, and I think he's going to make something out of them. Overall, I think 35 receptions, very fair. Again, based off of last year, LV Bunkley Shelton was a 33 catch guy. I'm saying that Brian Thompson is going to be 35. LV Bunkley Shelton was 418 yards. I'm saying that Thompson is a better deep threat, which is going to turn into 500. LV Bunkley Shelton was a two touchdown guy. I said three. If we're basing it off of last year, which is what I'm trying to do a little bit here, then it feels more than fair that those are the numbers that LV Bunkley Shelton can come up with. I don't know. Overall thoughts, though, I think that Thompson has to be the big play guy for this offense. I think Cam Johnson is very, very elusive. I want to see him uh, work more across the middle. We know he can do underneath and behind the line of scrimmage stuff. I want to see him used a little more creatively than what Vanderbilt did. For Brian Thompson, I want to see him as a deep threat. I want to see him take the top off. I want to see him uh, just overall have that chance to prove himself to be more than just a distraction kind of guy. I want those opportunities for Brian Thompson. I think it's more than reasonable to expect that he could make something out of nothing here. Final, final thoughts, I guess, is there's no excuse. Brian Thompson has to be at, at worst the number two receiver this year. But I think he needs to be potentially contend for number one. I love Cam Johnson. I think Cam Johnson is that guy. Brian Thompson needs to come in with an attitude of this is my, this is my, this, this is my offense. You know, the passing game is going to go through me. I think he could be capable of that. I wouldn't be surprised if he had more big plays than Cam Johnson by the end of the year. I think he's that kind of guy. I think he's that guy, pal. Trust me. We'll find out overall. Fine. Final thoughts for like the hundredth time. <laughs> I've noticed I've said that a lot. Final thoughts here. Brian Thompson, good number two receiver for Arizona State. I think he's going to end up being a really nice difference maker this year. I I am I am betting on the comeback season here. But that's going to go ahead and wrap up this edition of the Locked On Sun Devils podcast. Again, thank you guys so much for making Locked On Sun Devils your first listen every day. Remember, we're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, if you would like to check us out in a visual platform. But wherever you do get those podcasts, make sure that you like and subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you never miss a new episode when we put them out. If you're on Twitter, go ahead and follow me at RichieBrads36. And follow the podcast where you're there as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. But that'll do it for us here. So until next time, guys, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Devils.